since you and I recorded, we saw the WrestleMania kickoff press conference. It was unlike any press conference you or I have ever seen. I guess I kind of expected it to feel more like a UFC press conference. This was more like, uh, I don't know, a segment on Monday night raw. We got a series of promos. I did enjoy the pregame hype and, and we saw some talking heads out there like big E and CM Punk and Pat McAfee. Of course, the master of ceremonies was Michael Cole. And, uh, I think we were left with more questions than answers, which is probably a good thing. I think they had like 16 different television episodes plus a PLE and night one of WrestleMania before we get to night two. So there's a lot of runway here to tell a lot of stories that could go a million different directions. You've seen a lot of wrestling in your day. What'd you think of the press conference and, uh, the execution of, of what they tried to do there? Well, I can't help, but think just, you know, the, the immediate thoughts were, that were going into my mind is okay. They're in there. It's super bowl week. They're in Vegas. They've rented T-Mobile. Um, I thought, okay, so T-Mobile didn't have an event super that, that, you know, so but I guess they didn't, but the setup obviously was fantastic, but yes, here, uh, and as the, as the whole press conference went, I think they built the whole, whatever, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour show. I know that, but I think they built it toward everything else was just, I guess, building the episodic, but the backstage interview when rock and Roman went by, and had the words with um, Triple H. Didn't you think th- there's your story? That's the story you're going to see for the next uh, however long, six weeks. I, th- I thought that was the, the whole because they did the bloodline, and and I felt like they never really got anywhere. And and I'm saying uh, that's not a negative. That's not a detractor. I think by design they were just kind of episodically throwing all this and and you'll probably have more context i've been kind of out of the loop i went and watched basketball this weekend watched my daughter play and uh died into uh all day saturday hotel doing aew business so I was, i've been out of the loop several days um but when i watched it what was that last wednesday or yeah no thursday thursday that's right because you did the youtube thing congrats on that it was what did they originally have laid out or was that it? I don't think so. It's, 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 episodic. wait, wait, you're not sure if that was the original plan. Here's no, a spoiler. Right. Jim. It was not I the original plan. They alter. Let me just say that. What, what, what would it have been? They, I don't think they anticipated that people would backlash and boo the rock. I mean, that's probably from the outside looking in inconceivable. He's the, one of the biggest baby faces in the world. So. He shows up. Everybody's excited. They want to see him and Roman. Maybe the fans had a chance to think about it and thought, wait a minute. I think they got a million different options. And, uh, as a friend of mine likes to say, creative is subjective. What we do know is that one of those two nights, and if I were a betting man, I'd bet it'd be night one, uh, Cody will get his title shot against Roman, but there's plenty of story left to come. And there's a lot of story left to tell with sting's last match. Boy, if you, if you haven't already check out tickets, I know it probably, you probably think they're sold out and they might be right now, but it feels like every few days, a few more production kills open up AEWTIX.com. You guys are hovering around the 16,000 seat mark. It's going to be one of the biggest shows in AEW history and what a hell of a way to send off an icon. There's no other way to say it than sting in his last match in the Greensboro Coliseum on Sunday, March 3rd. I won't be attending the pay-per-view, but I will be watching. You guys are going to be right down the street from my house here in Huntsville for his go home dynamite and collision, which randomly enough will both be done here in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm, I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to attend that event. And I hope that you'll make plans to join me, join me in Huntsville. Tickets in Huntsville are on sale right now. AEWTIX.com. I'm going to be there. If you're there, come say, Hey, and, uh, chat me up about Sting's last match. But man, they kick things off in a big way. You know, I know everybody knew this was going to be the last match, but I kind of hoped that we would see a little Ric Flair turn last week on Wednesday. Instead, Ric Flair wasn't even there. And Sting's very first shot at AEW Gold, another victory, another dub. Sting is now a tag team champion with his pal Darby Allen as the quote unquote rub continues, as you said last week. 
but we saw something we usually don't see from sting a peek into his real life. Steve Borden's sons were front row. They acknowledged them before the match. And unfortunately the young bucks acknowledged them after the match, they laid waste to the entire Borden family and Darby Allen, a lot of bloodshed pulling their best Jim Cornette, all suited up in white and covered in the stingers blood, man, what a visual. I dug it. Wanted to see, uh, what you thought about, uh, the way we're getting things kicked off for stings last match. Well, you know, my style, um, I, I, you know, the episodic nature of any story, if you don't have that antagonist really up, I think when you look at any story in professional wrestling, that's had even moderate success, your heels got to be standing tall. You got to, it's, you know, sometimes it all, I feel like I sound so cliche as her old school, but I mean, any, any story told since the beginning of time, you got to build and the wrestling jargon is heat, but you can call it any, anything you want, but very rarely, I think, um, has, uh, you know, that type of impact. And I thought, I thought it clicked on every cylinder. Uh, I w- I was happy but to see it in, in so many ways and Matthew and Nicholas, uh, leaning into the EVPs and, you know, j- just the celebration afterwards, uh, they, it, it, it felt like everything was breathing and, uh, stings boys in there and, um, you know, long time sting watchers, um, which we both are, we would have never called, Hey, the boys are going to get their ass kicked. So, um, uh, well done. Absolutely. Well done. It was, um, and they took an ass whooping. <laughs> yeah, they did. They took a, all four of those guys took an ass, ass whooping from the bucks. So I'll just say, uh, things are heated up and the night in Greensboro, um, it, it's, it's just building in, in a, you know, what do we have? We have three, four, uh, to get there three or four weeks to get there. It's going to be, um, you can't call it a one man show, a one, one, one match show. Cause there's, there's, there's six televisions between now and then not counting rampage. I'm telling so you, if you're counting dynamite and collision only there's six, yeah. if you're counting uh rampage, there's nine episodes of TV. So I can't wait to see where this goes. Yep. Uh, I am really excited to see sting. And well, I guess one of those collisions is preempted. So maybe it's a yeah, whatever it's you're right. But you still. get the idea. There's a bunch of shows, more than a half dozen shows to continue to tell this story. And, uh, you know, I know that people are all, it feels like, man, if, if AEW decided, you know, that they were going to sign every free agent in the world and let them have the greatest series of matches in the world, there's still a contingent online who just hate everything AEW does. As long as you're watching, I don't think they mind just keep watching. But it is interesting to me that I don't think there's enough celebration of what Tony Khan is doing for Steve Borden. You know, I was here in the arena when sting finished up with TNA, it was two, uh, it was a two night Genesis. So he wrestled two matches in the same night. Once where the entire roster took turns, beating the shit out of him with EC three. And once where Magnus did the exact same thing and that was fine. We knew he was going to WWE but it wasn't a great send off for sting and Huntsville for TNA. It wasn't a great send off for sting in WWE. I'm just glad third time's a charm. Mm-hmm. It feels like there's way more interest and, and it, he's been handled with a lot more care. And I know that, that Tony Khan has his critics, but at the end of the day, Jeff, you can tell just based on the way that he's handled sting this entire run. Tony Khan is just a massive wrestling fan. Like you and I. Bingo. And, and, you know, um, you said it that, uh, third time's a charm and you know, this, the, the, the TNA, I, I don't even think I was around for that night. Um, but he, he was going to WWE and at WWE, um, the injury and, you know, I don't even remember kind of how that whole relationship from a televised perspective, how that ended. Uh, but it was no pomp and circumstance. So I think in, in a way the days, Sting appeared on AEW television in so many ways. 
it it truly was the beginning of the end uh, when he appeared. It, it, you kind of knew that th- this is it. And so I think in a lot of ways, when the day the tickets went on sale, all those questions talked about that not just the AEW fan base, but the professional wrestling fan base is eager to see a send off because it truly is. And that's, that's, you know, when you get down into the promoter mentality, give them something that they'll never, ever see again. Well, this is it. There's only one send off of a guy who's had a 30 to 40 year career that is iconic. And you're going back into the venue of Greensboro where he really stepped onto the the national scene and so many things to go with it. Um, it's just, it, it's, 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 uh, it pulls at the heartstrings, Connie, t- to me, if you're a wrestling fan, uh, there is nothing not to like about it. 